questions are yours. I go to the Bible, God's holy word, to find answers. Good questions again today, and let's get to the first one right now. Someone wants to know, when does one receive the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit has many functions. He draws us to Christ. He convicts us of our sin. He exalts the Savior. Read John uh, chapters 14 to 16. It's all about the Holy Spirit. He converts the sinner. He empowers the believer. What do you mean when does one receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible teaches that every Christian has the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. And uh, he that hath not the Spirit of Christ is none of his. So every true believer has received the Holy Spirit and it is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. However, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they receive power from on high. And so that empowering work of the Holy Spirit is something additional, and one receives it when he receives a personal Pentecost. Ephesians tells us, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. And now question number two talks about a pastor who claims to be an atheist and my opinion is asked for. Surely such a person rejects the statement of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11 that God has placed in the body pastors, evangelists, teachers, apostles, prophets, uh, that person who claims to be an atheist rejects that God has put them into the church and they are simply there doing a job and uh, rejecting the church. In fact, they're a hypocrite. They're accepting a salary from an institution that they refuse to acknowledge. Uh, that person is at best a social activist and at worst a confused do-gooder. My question is, whom do you pray to? And how do you conduct a funeral service? And how do you visit the sick and encourage them if you don't even believe that there is a God who hears and answers prayer? What do I think of a person who's an atheist and pastors a church? They ought to get out of the church and be honest. Now question number three, the old will be young there forever. That's a quote from an old gospel song that we all love. Is that true? Well, Revelation chapter 21 and verse four tells me that when we get to heaven, there'll be no sin and no sorrow, and no tears, and no curse. There'll be no limitations physically or mentally. That to me, to me, means immortal youth and total knowledge. Yes, I think that the language of that old hymn is dead on. The old will be young there forever, transformed in a moment of time. Immortal will stand in his likeness, the sun and the stars to outshine. What a glorious future awaits every born again child of God. Thank you so much for these good questions. I trust the answers have been a blessing. If you have a question you'd like me to use on the Bible as the answer, please write it out, send it to me. I'll be pleased to hear from you, and I'll get to your question on the air just as quickly as I can. And when you write, all the address you need is simply Faith to Live by Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And the code is uh, Box 426, Manitoba. The code is R3C2H. Six, Terry and Tim, brothers now, 
combining voices singing a couple of your favorite invitation songs. 